Hello everybody and welcome back to For Real. It's Wednesday and that means it must be time for this week's news moto. A couple of things before we get started. I'd like to ask you to please subscribe, like and comment. It really helps a lot because it increases the reach of our videos and YouTube uses these things to decide if our video is suggested to more viewers. We're for real about this and any money we earn from YouTube we give back to charities in Cambodia. We've just recently received a payment for the past month and we'll talk about that in our next um, weekend video. You don't have to donate anything other than your time and since you're already here, let's get started. Before we broach the subject of COVID, I thought I'd give you a bit of a listen to a sound that some of you might not have heard for a while. Do you know what that was? If you guessed that that was the sound of a can of Cambodia beer being opened, you'd be absolutely right. So now that your reader is sufficiently hydrated, let's move on to the COVID situation here in Cambodia. Today's case numbers were again slightly lower than they have been in recent weeks. Unfortunately, we're still seeing a rise in imported cases though, and as you'd expect, fears of the Delta variant are also rising along with these numbers of imported cases. The Kingdom is still a long way from turning the COVID corner, but progress is still being made. Today, there were 766 new cases, and of those, 307 were imported. The grand total is sitting at just over 75,000 right now. The Ministry of Health has announced the discovery of 39 Delta variant cases. 18 of these are local, and they include four health officials, six direct contact cases, and eight indirect contact cases. I guess the presence of the Delta variant is not surprising due to the huge numbers of imported cases streaming into Cambodia. At the moment, there are a plethora of news reports about illegal border crossings, and this is just the ones that make it to the media. There must be tons more that never do. A source has said the Cambodian government is optimistically eyeing a reopening by November, but a more reasonable expectation is for sometime in December or early 2022. There are only three months between now and November, so I think that's probably not realistic. But hey, it's nice to dream and we may as well think that until we hear otherwise. The source said, the problem is that without tourism, the economy is going to dry up because locals do not have the same money as people coming in from outside the country. Some members of the business community, particularly those in the hospitality sector, have stressed that Phnom Penh should be able to leverage its strong vaccination record. They are calling for a small travel bubble, or at least an easing of quarantine requirements for vaccinated individuals. Official health ministry figures indicate that more than 100% of the capital has been vaccinated, leaving some to speculate that Phnom Penh is the ideal location for the country's first travel bubble. Over 100% vaccination is quite a feat, and I think it's deserving of the bubble title. Anthony Galliano, who's president of the American Chamber of Commerce here in Cambodia, said while the kingdom may be in an excellent position to reopen, neighbouring countries and most of the other ASEAN countries are not. Progressive steps recommended by the industry's bodies can be gradually implemented. These include quarantine at home for vaccinated residents, allowing in vaccinated business travellers who test negative, greatly reducing the quarantine period, and contain segregated zones, such as for gambling in Suyanukville and vaccinated tourists. Holy cow! Custom authorities seized three containers of frozen buffalo meat imported from India because it contained COVID-19. The Ministry of Health warned that the virus can stay alive on frozen meat. Due to the massive spread of the virus in India, beef and buffalo meat from the subcontinent are now being seized by customs. The Ministry confirms that people could be infected with COVID-19 from food or from packaged food if food hygiene measures are not followed consistently. The Minister of Health has recommended five key measures to make food safe during the pandemic. Number one, Wash your hands often with soap and water or alcohol, and especially wash your hands before or after handling food, frozen food, fresh vegetables and fruits. Second, keep raw and cooked foods separate. Third, cook meat well, especially poultry, eggs, seafood and frozen foods to avoid the spread of viruses. Fourth, do not store food for several days, even at safe temperatures. And fifth, use safe water and raw materials. I really do hope all these tips were being followed before the pandemic as they are very basic food and hygiene rules. Phnom Penh's capital administration has again extended suspension of um, some businesses until the 6th of August. These include schools, particularly private and vocational training schools, and excludes only the schools that offer online training. 
also included are karaoke bars, discotheques, beer gardens and casinos, resorts, museums and amusement parks, massage businesses, cinemas, art theatres, fitness clubs and sports centres, and also gatherings of more than 15 people. CM Reap's provincial administration has also decided to extend its preventative administrative measures until the 7th of August. The extension may be extended even further, given the high number of COVID infections being detected daily in that province. CM Reap's also still got a curfew in place between 10pm and 4am, and it bans all gatherings and also bans traffic and all business activities during these times. Now here's an interesting update that might concern those of you currently outside Cambodia. The government has now confirmed that travellers to Cambodia will be able to pick from two luxury hotels which are offering special quarantine packages. Passengers will now be able to book rooms at the Sokhar Phnom Penh Hotel and Residence and the Courtyard by Marriott in Phnom Penh. They can book directly on the hotel website as little as two days before their departure to Cambodia. Passengers will have to show proof of their hotel reservations and other immigration documents as well as a negative PCR test certificate on arrival at Phnom Penh International Airport. The hotels will cover the cost of PCR tests during the 14-day quarantine period and have built this into the quarantine packages that they are offering. Passengers coming into Cambodia who don't select one of those two hotels will still be boarding the mystery bus and they will be taken to a hotel of the government's choosing to complete their 14-day quarantine. Cambodia is aiming to vaccinate at least 80% of the total population of 16 million. It is expected that 10 million adults will be vaccinated by October and 2 million children from 12 to 17 years of age will be vaccinated commencing on the 1st of August. Cambodia's vaccination coverage will then reach 75%. It doesn't really say where the other 5% is going to come from, so we'll have to wait and see. Cambodia is expected to have all 20 million doses of COVID-19 vaccinations for the 10 million people or 62% of the total population in the country by the end of this month. With the newly arrived Sinopharm vaccines, Cambodia has received over 17 million doses of vaccines through purchase and donations, 6.2 million doses of Sinopharm, 10.5 million doses of Sinovac and 324,000 doses of AstraZeneca. The United States will also provide more than 1 million doses of Johnson & Johnson vaccine to the Cambodian people under the COVAX initiative. 3 million doses of Sinovac will arrive in Cambodia and 2 million more in September for the vaccination of children between 12 and 17 years old. The Ministry of Post announced yesterday that it has confiscated 4,250 COVID-19 rapid tests from residents after they ordered the kits from the Ministry to resell. The Ministry identified the opportunists and took action at five locations to confiscate the 4,250 test kits. The rapid test kits had been distributed by the Ministry for commercial use at a cost of $3.70 each, so companies could test workers to prevent the spread of COVID. COVID rapid tests can be bought legally at most pharmacies from between $8 to $12, so a good little profit if they were resold. Let's go to the Deep South now. In Sihanoukville today, four Chinese men were sent to court for questioning over a suspected kidnapping attempt. The victim was also a Chinese national, but he was the owner of a pure water production business. When he was abducted, he was standing in front of a Chinese-owned casino. The kidnappers pushed him into the Land Cruiser Prado. The kidnappers detained the victim at their rental house, where they held him for ransom. They were arrested within a few hours without any injuries. After the arrest, Police rescued the victim and seized the Land Cruiser Prado, as well as other related materials. Phnom Penh Municipal Court Deputy Prosecutor arrested two men and seized more than 50 kilograms of methamphetamine and ketamine. Following their arrest and interrogation, the Ministry of Interior's anti-drug department team raided a rented condominium unit in Phnom Penh's Chabar Ampov district. They seized more than 200 kilos of drugs, including MDMA, cathinone, methamphetamine and ketamine. Seven suspects were arrested. If convicted, all will face life imprisonment. That's a very long time in a Cambodian prison. The Kravong District Police Force climbed a mountain and burned illegally planted marijuana. The team of officers burned marijuana crops in 13 locations and nine reservoirs. The entire operation took place in Takeo Province's Krivong District. The motive of the operation is the suppression of illegal marijuana cultivation that plagues the country. An eyewitness said, wow man, do you know if Food Panda delivers here? 
Specialist forces are currently searching for the owner of the cannabis plantation. I think the person in this next story should have been on the herb. He's a policeman and he refused to move on from his former relationship. Out of jealousy and rage towards his ex and her new boyfriend, he fired shots at them, causing mayhem and fear to locals. Local police said that the perpetrator who fired the shots was a 40-year-old male who was a lieutenant colonel working at the bodyguard command. Before the incident, eyewitnesses say the suspect arrived at a drinking spot near his ex-girlfriend's home. Later, when the woman's new lover arrived at the scene, the man was outraged. The woman confronted the perpetrator and cited his constant abuse towards her as the reason their relationship ended. Seeing the anger of the assailant, the woman and her new lover entered her house and locked the door. The suspect knocked and shouted at the couple through the door, causing a great ruckus. He then pulled out two pistols and shot at the couple's car. After hearing the shots, the lady's new lover contacted the police and asked them to intervene immediately. Local authorities quickly arrived at the scene and apprehended the gunman. They asked the victim to file a formal complaint to build a case against the perpetrator. Unconfirmed reports said that the car was a gold Camry and had it coming. If you've ever found yourself on a highway in Cambodia, you'll know that there are silver vans that take people from one town or city to another, and they frequently drive at a very reckless pace and with very little regard for any of the other traffic on the road. So silver van drivers watch out. A number of speed cameras will be installed along National Roads 3, 5 and 7 in order to catch traffic violators and deduct points according to a new traffic app system. 14 speed cameras will be installed along National Road 3 at 10 different places. There are also plans to install speed cameras along National Roads 5 and 7 with technical assistance from Japan International Cooperation Agency. A new app will record 12 points for each driver and a number of points will be deducted if the driver violates the traffic law. When all the points are deducted, the driver's license will be suspended for six months to one year before he or she can take the exam again to obtain a new license. Over in Stung Treng, authorities have cracked down on illegal marble mining and arrested six people. They said the authorities seized several mining machines. The villagers near the quarry were concerned about the marble mine polluting the water. On the subject of water, here are a few water-related stories. The Wonders of Mekong project, along with fisheries officials, have received five giant Mekong catfish from a local farmer. The fish will eventually be released back into the river. These rare fish were raised by a family in the Kampong Cham province for the last 13 years after the family bought them from a local fisherman. The length of the fish ranged from 147 centimetres to 168 centimetres and they weighed between 45 and 60 kilos each. That is some big fish. After the fish grow to a healthy size, the project plans to release them back to their natural habitat. I'm just wondering how much bigger they have to be before they're considered a healthy size. Listen on, dear viewer, the Mekong giant catfish was the biggest freshwater megafish recorded in the 2005 Guinness Book of World Records, weighing in at a whopping 293 kilos with a length of up to 3 metres. That is a lot of fish tacos. The National Committee for Coast Management and Development approved a project to develop a high-level public beach resort in Kep Province. The development contract is between the state and the private sector to improve and create beaches, public recreation, public spaces and green spaces for the public and tourists. Hopefully it won't lose its small beach charm. A 13 metre boat transporting vegetables and 11 people caught fire near Korong Island causing one death and six injuries. A child and an infant were among the injured who were rescued. Fortunately, 10 survivors were rescued by the provincial authorities who were called by fishermen near the incident. Let's get out of the water and head over to planes, trains and automobiles. Cathay Pacific Airways will operate three inbound and outbound flights between Phnom Penh and Hong Kong on July the 30th, August the 13th and August the 27th. The return of Cathay Pacific flights also marks the first time the company will land in Phnom Penh under its namesake branding. Plans to build new international airports have been put on hold as the pandemic continues. New airports in Koh Kong, Badambong and Mundilkiri provinces have been postponed. Phnom Penh's new 1.5 billion international airport was 40% complete at the end of May, but it may also be under threat as the situation continues. As of May, the new Siem Reap International Airport was at 42% complete, but there's been no news for a little while about the future of that endeavour. Now on to a story that's really captured my imagination. Endurance rail travel. 
A direct freight rail link between Hanoi and Belgium offers the prospect of improved access to European markets with our Southeast Asian exporters. Vietnam Railways announced the departure of the first train this week, running on the world's longest track, the China Europe Railway Express Line. The journey is expected to take between 25 and 27 days. At this stage, it is just a freight train, but can you imagine that journey? It would be absolutely wonderful. Cambodia has long been interested in improving its cross-border rail network. Improved cross-border rail links would help Cambodia deal with the high cost of sending exports to Europe by sea. The Kingdom has faced problems exporting goods such as rice in recent months because of the shortage of the shipping containers and higher shipping costs. The Ministry of Public Works has unveiled a project to expand the entire National Road 6 from the current two lanes to four lanes. National Road 6 stretches over 320 kilometres between Phnom Penh and Siem Reap province and plays a vital role for tourism and development and trade activity since it connects Phnom Penh to Siem Reap. No start or finish dates have been published, so we will be waiting for those percentages to come in the future. In our final story of the day, global fast fashion chain H&M is set to open its first store in Cambodia. Garment Manufacturers Association in Cambodia's Secretary General said that the store opening signifies strong economic growth with increased domestic consumption by local Cambodians. He said it would also help improve the state of fashion in the country, particularly for the young generation. Look out, Zando's H&M is coming for you. That's the end of the news wrap-up for the 28th of July. I'm just about finished my beer, so it's a good thing that we're going to end off here. Thanks so much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure to tell you what's been going on in Cambodia in the past week. Don't forget to have a look at the links in our description. We've got links to other people that are making content out of Cambodia, links to other people that we follow for various reasons. Some are pretty random, but have a look. You might find some good stuff there that you haven't seen before. Um, thanks so much for watching as always, and we'll see you in the next one, which will be on the weekend. Bye.